Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, 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 welcome back. Ooh, you start talking about the wrong thing. Boy, I tell you, the little bot started running crazy and it will disconnect you. Okay, so again, I do acknowledge that it is football Sunday. Um, Yeah, I hope the Falcons win. Um, I'm, I'm representing my red and black, red and black tights or whatever. Uh, I still will be at Super Sunday because the Falcons are already wealthy. Okay. They already wealthy and Arthur Blank, he just got too much money. Matter of fact, Arthur, holla at your girl. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for joining me on Joanna Work Faith and Fitness Live on Sundays at whenever we get started after two. <laughs> but if you want stability, go to On the Move with Joanna Ward. Uh, on WATC 57. Yes, yes, yes. We still do shoot the show. And if you want to share your book, your concept or your idea, then by all means, um, join me. You know, holla at your girl. Let's see. Is our guest here on Instagram? It's funny how people, because I'm in the fitness, they expect my life to be me jumping around, hopping and skipping. No, no, you got to buy a badge for that. You got to sign up with me for that. No, no, no. I did all that. I did all that already. Y'all got over. Give yourself a hand. Pat yourself on the back. You got over before, but you what you won't get is me. <laughs> now, you can get a bunch of folks that's willing to jump around and hop around and skipping and entertain y'all, but um, not I. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience and coming back. If you were on earlier, I do not have that receipt, so I will have to read a question again. And again, the question is one that I know that you guys are tired of talking about because the truth is something that nobody wants to talk about because everybody have a tingling ear and nobody wants to hear the truth because the truth is supposed to make you free, but it usually make us mad. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I can't believe she said that. He said that. A lot of the problems that some of our young people are having that I speak to, I'm talking about when I say young, I mean like 20, you know, mid 20s, early 30s. Um, a lot of the catastrophic suffering that they have is because of rebellion and, and disrespect. And can't nobody tell you nothing. Like, nobody tell me what to do. It's almost like, I'm going to show you how destructive I can be. I'm going to show you how reckless I can be. And I'm saying to myself, but sweetie, you you hurting yourself, okay? Um, and then there's a lot of people out here, oh, you, 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 you what is it? they say you either washed up or you got old people out here to my, I want to see if I still have it. Have what? What is it you, what is you trying to st think you still have? Life is supposed, supposed to be lived in ages, stages, and phases. And so the young people don't mess up their lives like a lot of these older people. We should be teaching them and telling them the truth. Because we can't go back to the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the, some of us even the 50s. So why would you continue to fool people into some nonsense, into believing that, Oh, you know, hey, yeah, do as you will, whatever you want to do. That's cool. You want to go out here and just destroy yourself? Y'all need to start staying taking the ground because we've already been in our 20s, our 30s, and our 40s. Why are we still out here talking about, I, I want to see if I still have. Still have what? If you marry, male or female, go somewhere and sit down. Go somewhere and sit down and figure out your future and what you're going to do with the dash between your, your, your birth date and your death date. All this, still have what? What is it you still trying to have? It's the most mind-boggling thing to me that people who are 50 are still doing what they were doing when they was 20 and 30 years old. You just lost 30 years. I, I'm not even going to say 20. 30 years. 30 years. Some people have never, ever, ever leveled up. Never, ever, ever caught up with the maturity of their actual age. And so you have nothing to share with the young people. Now, you know, well, I shared it. I told them and they didn't like it. Good, because we didn't like it either. But guess what? We still got the information, so we were responsible for using the information that we actually had. But if you don't give your young people, your children, any information, what are, what are they going to fall back on? What resources are they going to have to guide them? The so social media? Th that we all know is fake and messed up and pumped up. People, oh, they were in love on it. Oh, I'm looking at all their posts. They were in love. Are you serious? Y'all really, y'all really serious. Y'all really are out here believing because you saw a post of people booed up on social media that they're together and happy. Look between the lines. And that's what we want to talk about today. I don't know if my guest is available now. I don't see them uh, asking to come on. But I want to talk to you guys today about how can you heal through love when you haven't addressed the hatred. I don't know about you guys, but we... You you probably are encountering encountering a lot of hateful people. I'm talking about hateful, evil, no respect for your life and no respect for their life people. I don't care how much they go to church. I don't care how much they read their Bible. I don't care how many they, times they clap their hands and holla hallelujah. 
If you have not been healed from a past hurt, you are in trouble because that hurt is going to harm you and those around you in the long run. When you stop lying to people, all you need is love. And people are out here actually trying to go, oh, all they need is love. No, I come to counter that. I'm countering that thought. All you need is love. That's the problem is that we think all we need is love. No, we need to be healed. We need to be healed and we need to be delivered. That's what we need. Everybody. Every, every day you need healing. You need healing from hurt. And this is an activity that I want you guys to do. It's very simple. I'm not going to be over here that long because I have other stuff to do. I don't have, I don't know how people are trying to figure out how they have all this time to be on the internet, but I have to add my voice because I'm like, if all these lying people out here just, just really pimping people out of peace with lies, I got to tell the truth. And maybe if I hurt, if I help two or three or four, that's, that's worth my time. But I want you to think about, I want you to gather in your own thoughts or either on a piece of paper. I want you to gather in your thoughts or either on a piece of paper like this. Who is it that you hate? Who do you hate? Did we get our, our person to join us? Who is it that you hate? That's what I want you to do right now. As you listen to me, as I'm trying to figure this out and uh, get our guest on, I want you to tell me, well, not tell me, but I want you to write down seriously. You think it's, you think it's a game. Oh, I ain't worried about that. Oh, I'm over there. I know a person that told me that. I'm going to give y'all a real, a real life story. A real life story since y'all like stories. I don't know if you like stories as much as you like lies. But real fact, I went to God and it took about nine months for God to show me me and the damage that I had done in a relationship that I was in. And through him showing me that, I went to the person. Listen to me, it's very clear. Did you pay attention? I went to the person who God showed me that I played a role in the pain and the suffering of the overall relationship, including the person. I went to that person and I said, I need you to forgive me for the things that I've done wrong to you. And instead of the person catching on, because this was like 20 something years ago, really like almost 30. And instead of the person catching on to what was actually happening, he was like, oh, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. I told you, I ain't worried about that. Yeah, but you are. You are worried about it. You feel some kind of way about what happened. And instead of you releasing me, I'm releasing myself and you're releasing me. And guess what? I go on with my life. Okay. I go on with my life. So I don't know who it is that you hate or who you have an issue with. I don't know if it's your mother, your father, your grandmother, your most of his exes, you know, most of these people, they're fine when they come out of high school, they're fine when they come out of college, they're fine when, before they get married or get engaged or whatever. Uh, but typically as an ex, but sometimes a lot of that is a result of a bad relationship with a parent and no relationship with God. And so I want you to write down who it is that you hate. Who do you hate? Okay. That's what should go in your paper. Who do you hate? Who do you hate? You hate somebody. If you don't hate anybody, good for you. Good for you. Awesome. Because what I want to let you know is that all forms of hatred are a form of self-hatred. And you hating somebody is not going to hurt them at all. Like I said, God had to deal with me about how I was dealing with somebody. Or how I had dealt with somebody first because I thought it was you, you did it to me. I can't believe you did this to me. Oh, I'm so offended. I'm so offended. But by me being close to God and getting to the word of God, God was able to show me, Joanna, hey, you, you played a role in the pain too. And I was like, dang, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You did this and you didn't do that. And so when God showed me that, I, like I said, the first thing I did was picked up the phone and I caught the person. We were in a very intimate and close relationship. And I said, uh, hey, I need you to forgive me. Now, a lot of people don't have the humility to do that because I don't think they did anything wrong. <laughs> All of us play some type of role. Even if we allowed ourselves to be victimized, you still played a part in that. You still played a part. The only people that don't play a part are children. And we're going to get to that. The only people that don't play a part in their own pain usually are children. 
unless they're like the children I just talked about that are growing up and they're rebellious. Like, I'm going to show my mom and daddy I don't got to listen. I'm going I'm to show my mom and daddy I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's a whole nother topic about rebellious children. Because guess what, rebellious child? We all have been one and don't nobody get hurt but but you. But when it comes to this hatred that we have in our hearts for other people, like I said, typically is rooted somewhere around a parent somewhere. Or even if it's not the direct parent that raised you, it's typically something that happened in vitro or something that happened in your blood, in your bones, in your DNA. Like you got it from somewhere, whatever hatred you have. And then what happens is that's translated in through a relationship, especially through the root or the vessel of unforgiveness. OK, so that's why I ask you, write it down. Let's find out who it is that you hate. Is it your boss? Is it your ex, whoever he, she, they, whatever? Is it your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your cousin, your niece, your nephew? Your, it usually, like I said, the longest list is ex people who are ex. You got a lot of people who have unresolved issues with their quote unquote ex, whatever. And they're trying to mask over it by going and creating what I call superficial relationships with other people to try to suppress the pain that came from that of that relationship with that particular ex. Um, so I'm, I'm asking you to find that out, not to, this isn't to expose your enemies, right? It's to expose the enemy, this enemy. The, the who do I hate is to expose what's probably keeping you from living that absolute peace in your life. That's, that's what I, who do I hate? And as soon as you decide to be honest with yourself, even if it's you, I hate me. You might hate yourself. There are a lot of people out here, they absolutely hate themselves. And I'll tell you why. Because the minute you think you got away with something, right? The minute you dirty did somebody, the minute you cheated or schemed or scammed and got away, guess who you was really getting over on? You. And if you don't deal with that, with the blood of Jesus and get that stuff purged up out of you, you walk around hating yourself because you know exactly who you are. There's one thing that you can't hide from and that is your conscience. God put it there because he wanted you to have it. He wanted something to stay with you after you do whatever you do. Even if a, a clear conscience, people think the conscience is only bad. No, no, no. I see, I have a clear conscience because remember, I went to that individual and I said, I need you to forgive me for what I did in our relationship. And he, to this day, he still hadn't caught on to it. He hadn't caught on to what was actually happening. He, was, he, has, he did not catch on to the fact that, hey, she's liberating herself from that situation. She's liberating herself and he had the unmitigated God. He didn't even know what he was doing. Guess what he said? I forgive you. Now, whether he meant it or not, it doesn't matter. He said it out of his mouth. Our words are living. Once he said it out of his mouth to me, not only did I release myself from it, but he released me from it as well. And so I ask you again, this is my last time asking you, who do you hate? I can't stand such a such a so-and-so. I hate her. Well, what did she do? Oh, back five, six, twenty-five, thirty-five thousand years ago, they did A, B, C, X, Y, Z. I hate my ex this. I hate my ex that. I hate, I hate, I hate. Who do you hate? Some people hate a whole people. I hate black people. I hate white people. You hate a whole people? You hate a whole, you got, like, you have energy and space within yourself to hate. You need to let yourself heal. Okay, let yourself heal. And the only way you can do that is to get that hatred out of your heart. Jesus shows us uh, all those antichrist, demonically influenced people who think that as long as I ignore God and act like the Bible was written by somebody else and come up with all these crazy excuses, then I'll be free from having to, to deal with the consequences in the conscience of me. No, you still gonna have to know. You still gonna get dealt with because you know better. And you trying to deny it and all that, that's not gonna work. But Jesus said on that cross, and I think it's very powerful and it says a lot that speaks to his person. It speaks to his personality. It speaks to who he is and the power in his being, in his person. He says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's one of the most boss things he says other than it is finished. I, I, it's powerful if you call yourself a Christian and you still have hatred in your heart and you're still out here trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and mad at this, mad at that. Guess what? You, you, not, you can't be... Jesus said, if you don't forgive people their sins and their transgressions and their iniquities, that God can't forgive you. Who can afford that? I said this before. I said it over and over and over again. Who can afford for God not to forgive them? But all the mess that all of us have done. We've all done a lot of different mess. And like I said, people who have that safe self-hatred, they dirty did somebody, right? They dug some ditches and stuff. Like people fell in them. And they got away with it. Yay, look at you. But you're not, you didn't really get away with it. It is in your conscience. 
when you have created bridges and supported people and helped people and did the right thing, guess what? You also have a clear conscience. So it doesn't matter what you say about me. It doesn't matter what you do. Guess what? You, you can't cause me no harm. I have a clear conscience. I did right by you. So this hatred has to be dealt with first, y'all. It's like me trying to give you a house full of furniture, but you don't want to take out your old furniture. It's like me trying to give you a new wardrobe, but you don't want to get rid of your old wardrobe. And and Jesus talks about trying to put new wine in old wine skins. You're trying to act like you're a new person, but your heart is still hurt and beat up and badgered and messy and petty and childish and immature and insecure. You still want to move on and forge on. I'm just going to go into another relationship. I don't care. You need to be healed, sweetie. This whole message today is about dealing with hatred in your heart. As I know people love, because it's, it's just in our human nature to deflect, defend, and deny. It's in our human nature to go with the idea instead of reality. It's in our human nature to, to, to buy into falsehoods instead of buying into the truth. And the truth of the matter is we're dealing with a lot of hatred in people's hearts. I believe it's Matthew 24, 12. It says, because the love of many will wax cold, that wickedness will abound. Well, because wickedness is abounding, uh, the love of many will wax cold. They, they're waxing cold in their heart because wickedness is abounding. So I'm going to ask you to deal with the hatred within yourself. Even if it's hatred of yourself, who told you to hate yourself? What social media post, what picture, what video, what movie, what magazine, what did you see? What did you see that has caused you to hate yourself? What is it that life told you you were supposed to accomplish other than being here and, and glorifying God, what is it that life has told you you were supposed to accomplish or somebody had told you you were supposed to accomplish in order for you to be quote unquote successful? The reason you hate yourself. What, what's really going on? Like these are questions you have to ask yourself. I'm just articulating them. I'm a soundboard so you can have to deal with this. So you know what? And it's not about, oh, she's trying to expose me. No, I'm not. I'm trying to expose it. I'm trying to expose the root so that you can stop bearing this fruit. In your life, this fruit of frustration, this fruit of pain, this fruit of fear. That's what I'm doing. Is I am trying to get to the root so that you can get to be who God called you to be and really, really, truly enjoy your life and not be oppressed and suppressed. And if nobody ain't drinking and turning up and smoking and all that kind of stuff that you can't, you, you don't feel it. I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling it. Because you're fleshly oriented. And as long as your flesh is not being entertained or satisfied or soothed, you don't know how to really appreciate things that are deeper than your flesh, which hatred is one. There's people with so much hatred in their heart. If the wrong person walks in the room, it changes their whole mood. And the person isn't wrong because they're the wrong person. It's your attitude about that person. That person has a lot of power over your life. You've given that person a lot of power. Lots and lots of power. Take it back. Take it to the feet of Jesus. The thing about that conscience that we were talking about is it can be cleared with the blood of Jesus. Curses of, of, of all kinds of stuff that, that I, I don't even have time to articulate can be cleared with the blood of Jesus. With a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is why Satan is working so hard over time. I'm talking about doubling down, tripling down to try to get you not to go to the word of God. Try to get you not to bow down to God by your bedside. Bow to every other demonic, satanic perversion. But don't bow to the king of kings and lords, lords by, beside your bed. That's what he's doing. He's working very, very hard. Very, very hard to keep your mind preoccupied and distract you and deceive you into believing that there's nothing more than just this, than now. There's nothing more than, than, than what you have going on now. So you, sh you should be able to hate whoever you want to hate. I'm going to feel the way I want to feel. It's not working out for you. I don't even have to ask you how it's working out. I know it's not working out. Remember this. Hatred only hurts you. And you might be justified in feeling that way. But you don't have to keep feeling that way. And if you decide that I don't care what you say. I don't care what she says. I don't care what he says. I'm going to feel the way I want to feel. Don't be surprised if catastrophic chaos never leaves your life. Don't be surprised if you none of your relationships turn out the way that you want them to turn out. Don't be surprised if you keep drawing toxic people to yourself. Okay? Because that's the smell of hatred. That's what hatred does. You think, well, I'm going to hate that person, but I'm going to love this person. Let me tell y'all something. Be careful. Because people who hate people in their past or their parents and all that kind of stuff, they can't love you. 
I know that we want to believe it. Yeah, he or she hates that person, but they're going to love me. There's, that's never going to work out. That person has hatred within them. And just the idea of love and trying to love the hell out of people, that's not going to change. That's not going to change what's going on. It's not going to change because you met them. You're just a convenient distraction from who they really hate, which is themselves. So I'm asking you, I'm pleading, I'm imploring, I'm begging you that if you have hatred in your heart, don't try to go just hook up with somebody else. You got hatred in your heart from whomever. Don't just try to go hook up with another person. Please. Because you're going to cause those people problems. You're going to cause those, cause those people pain. You're going to cause yourself even more pain. And now guess what? All you did was found another person to hate. That's all you did. Yes, God loves you. He does. But you have to try to love him to see that. And people will tell you, yeah, I know God loves me. I know God loves me. Oh, I love God. I'm good. God, 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 God. Well, why isn't God good enough? That's the question. Because if God is ever good enough for you, if God is ever good enough for you, you'll get a lot of stuff right. But if you're still out here baiting and switching and trying to manipulate and deceive, and you're trying to, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do da 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 da, and I'm gonna prove these points, don't be surprised if the person that gets disappointed the most is you. It's you. Let God be good enough for you and to you. He'll show you who to push out of your life and who to pull into your life. He'll show you the way that you're supposed to prosper, which includes peace. It doesn't. Why are you trying to go in a way to prosper that doesn't include peace, protection, guidance, direction, or purpose? Why? I just want it. I just want it. I want it. Why? So I can post something. So I can prove to other people, oh, look how prosperous I am. This is that nonsense we're talking about. Let the hatred go. Let the hatred go. Let the hatred go because behind that mask of hatred is jealousy, immaturity, immaturity, insecurity, low self-esteem, low confidence, being intimidated by people who don't even care nothing about what you're talking about. Hatred hides a lot of things. There, there's a lot of stuff that can hide behind hatred. So don't embrace it. Get with God this week. And if you don't know, if you don't have a person or people on your list that you've written down that you hate, just ask God to search your heart in the name of Jesus Christ and deal with any deposits that you have. Because hatred only hurts you. And I'm going to be honest with you, you're never going to really experience true love if you have hatred in your heart for anybody. You never will. Because it, it's eating up a piece of your heart. It's, it's occupying a part of your life to hate somebody. And so until you clear out all that hatred, love can't live there and like i said on an earlier video a lot of y'all think lust is love and it's not it's like oh because i'm with you and we screwing and we doing that that means that we're together nah i'm gonna say this when i'm done there are lots of people that are with you but they're not for you and a lot of everybody should have experienced this by now just because somebody with you jwf 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 doesn't mean they're really with jwf you know what i mean or they're not for it. They're not for it. They're with us, but they're not for us. Now, that means two things. That means that you're like on our side and supporting us. Or you're not for our forward movement. Because people can be around and be for you, but not really for you. Because what they're doing is they're polluting and contaminating your progress just because they're around. But they're not supposed to really be there. If you want to know more about this, you can join us on our prayer call. You can go and join at workfitness.com and look up the number. It's a faith and fitness boot camp. So no, it's not at a convenient time in the morning. It's at five o'clock in the morning because that's when you need to build your faith early in the morning. Before the foolishness starts in your day, you need to build your faith. So yes, get yourself up. And get on there and I'll tell you more about being unequally yoked. Being unequally yoked goes beyond the borders of um, who you married to and who you dating. Sometimes you just unequally yoked with complacent, apathetic, and mediocre people who are causing you to be the same. Even if it's spiritual, a lot of this is spiritual mediocrity. That's what I see. I see academic excellence. Financial excellence. Oh, look at me. I'm doing so well financially. I see fitness excellence. Oh, look at me. I got a six pack. Oh, I lost weight. Da -da -da -da. I'm in shape. Cool. Spiritual mediocrity and complacency. That's what a lot of people have. 
and, and it's so crucial because your spirit is the anchor of your soul. The spirit is what drives your entire life. But yet here we are. So get up and get it together. Being unequally yoked goes beyond who you married to. Goes beyond who you dating. Go beyond goes beyond what religion you connected to. Being unequally yoked means you're connected and dealing and around and hearing and listening and rubbing up against and bounding with people who are not meant to be for you. Okay? So God bless you. Make his face to shine upon you. I hope this helps heal any hatred that you have in your heart. I hope it helps you heal because you need love. God is love. I don't know if you think that somebody out here that's filled with hatred is going to bring real love to you. But I can tell you right now it's lust and it's a lie and it ain't going to live up to what you think it is. And guess what? Like I said earlier about the question, most of y'all have a history within your own life that confer confirms what I just said. So you can be mad at me all you want to. I'm like, what? you being mad at me is not going to help or hurt me one way or the other. Think about it. Nothing that you do is wired to who I am. That's how you should feel about the people you're going to deal with this week. Or those people who you don't talk to or you don't know, they still pulling your chains mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically because they said or did something however many years it was ago. Don't give people that much power over you. And like I said, let that hate that's in your heart heal. I love you. Join the workfitness.com, the faith and fitness foundation.com. Oh, yeah, we own it, doggone it. We just ain't, I mean, you know, I'm going to leave it there. Hey, I love you guys. Talk to you next Sunday or you know, if I have time, I'll get back on live. But hopefully you'll heal from the hatred in your heart and not just try to, oh, I'm looking for love. I'm looking for love. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. Let me tell you something before I leave. If you have real love in your heart, there's just no way you're that lonely. It's not. And and then, then think about this. You know, I know I'm beating the skin off the dead horse, but how many people Believed or believe that if I just find the right person to love me, then that's going to help me heal and be the best person I can be, right? But then they get, I guess, the right person. But that person is not enough. And so guess what they do? They get more people and more people and more people and then they get divorced and then they get married again and then they start dating this person and that person they date these people why are they dating that person and so really let's just ask ourselves is the real problem what kind of spouse and what kind of partner we get in life or is it about us that's a question you have to ask yourself sincerely like is it really that i don't have anybody because most people that have somebody they're not happy either and they're happy with that person so like i said earlier the hatred it, it, is something you have to heal from within yourself okay Love you guys. And I hope you understand what that means. It doesn't mean that I have to screw you or go out and drink with you or get high with you or even know you like that. If people can hate people for no reason, certainly I can love people for no reason. Bye. Bye, Facebook. <laughs>